I think there's a confusion between all the divisions because people are like, oh, I saw this and I have to ask, well, did they have beach trunks on? Oh, that was the, the, the what do they call that now? The, the physique. The physique. And if they have black trunks on, that's called the classic. And yes. people look at me and go, why? <laughs> I don't know. It's not my era. Wow, we would have never believed this. We're on Spotify, we're on Apple, we're on Google. Go out there and listen to us. So we're excited about it. We're glad you're excited about it too. We're going to talk today about a sport that Steve and I love. And um, we we got to, let's first talk about the toxicity of our sport that we love, bodybuilding. We know it's, you and I have both fell on the negative side of health of that sport through some of our chemical usage and I, my steroid use has been out there in my story since I was bodybuilding. I never understood why people didn't tell the truth, Steve. I, people would ask me, do I do steroids? I go, did the sun come up this morning? I go, yes, I do, because you can't compete at the level that I'm competing at with these the, guys. The body won't synthesize that much protein that's no, needed. It, it, it's just that, you know, it's part of a demand of a sport. And it, you know what's crazy, Steve? It wasn't illegal when I did it. It came through the mail, and it was reasonably priced. Oh, you mean the Atlas, the Atlas thing where he was sending D ball to kids? No, no. I could order Diana Ball, hundred mil, uh, I mean, um, uh, ten milligrams, hundred tablets, and it come in a, a UPS package. Uh, that's, that was that whole chart. when I found out that Charles Atlas is uh, the, the his the, program, the, the comic the, books, the kid, the, kick the skinny kid on the beach. Yes, that he was sitting D ball and. <laughs> Sending these kids D ball pills. Well, well, well D ball ended up in supplements. Remember that? Yes. That was a secret ingredient. You and the I hot talked stuff. Uh, orange. Uh, or, uh, orange. Ultimate orange. Uh, uh, there was some good stuff that if you didn't get it on the first or second run, you missed the good oh, stuff. Oh yes. Because there's a, there's a certain one of your friends that were popular in the '80s. His company does that as well. And I'm, I'm I'm preserving your friendship. <laughs> yeah, we don't his, fr- his first line is always loaded. Uh, you don't want to rat the guys out, but you know we, we can talk about it. I get so you know you know when it gets personal, Steve. I think the union have because there again, this guy is. I just sent you another guy this week. Yes. He's, and on our set tonight, you got asked other people about um, nutrition, and this is the only guy I trust. I'm serious. I mean, I've been sponsored by Twin Lab. I've been sponsored by a company called BioCell. I've been on all the Weeder products, and so so I am determined. Because I didn't have my integrity because I was not a believer back then. And I would tell people to take stuff that didn't work. That was and, my, when I was a manager of, uh, of, uh, of GNC. Uh, uh, that was at 2021 and I was a manager of GNC. I knew every product that had $10 or more a commission. Uh, <laughs> and I sold. This works for that. <laughs> right? It's a weight gainer. It says weight gainer on there. Just it's take a- half the servings. Ta-da! <laughs> so we're talking to you from experience. There again, I got paid money, real money, to have my pictures taken with products I didn't use. So I made it a real big thing. You know what was amazing about products? Is I remember when I got I got my sponsor with my protein company. Uh-huh. And it was an out-of-country out of protein. And I gained 10 pounds. And that's why I found out that all protein is not created equal. And that's when I went down the rabbit hole of understanding that uh, it's a rabbit hole. I was a bodybuilder when the Soviet Union was still around. And and so the closer I could get to the East um, European countries, the better the products got. It, it, the closer to the border you got, the more lively the products got. I could go get my blood work done from an American doctor, and they say, "When did you get off the, uh, you know, nowadays what do they call it, the a gear?" Yeah. You know, when did you get off the gear? I said, uh, "I'm not off the, I'm not off the gear. I'm still on it." They go, "Well, your blood work's great." I go, "Thank you." So I needed to know. <laughs> and then I got phone calls from people from my doctor would tell them, "Hey, go talk to Tom. He's got some uh, gear." <laughs> What uh, what is the name for? Because no. it's gear now. It used to be juice. Yeah, it's still it's and, still gear. And 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 before the steroids came out, it was called roids. Yes, you could you could talk in in front of um, uh, lay people and say roids, and they wouldn't even know what you're doing. I, I tell so many people that come in and they they ask me about TRT, and they're they're always looking for somebody to sell it. I'm like, are you over thirty? And they're like, yeah. I'm gonna. 
Go to a t- hormone replacement doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you trying to uh, uh, grow? Don't men, buy fake stuff. <laughs> grown men with a job, and you want to go buy out of the toilet in the, in the back of the gym. <laughs> go to the doctor's office. Absolutely. So, so, so the history of our sport has always been PED inspired. That's um, performance enhancing drugs, and caffeine will qualify because it just means keep going up on the dosage of caffeine. <laughs> Caffeine itself is not a PED. Have you but seen if you some of the have things your, these kids do? If you want to see your performance enhanced, do caffeine in a large quantity. I used to have a kid that would come in, um, and he would brag to me how he would take Red Bull with one three dimethyl products, and I'd look and go, "You have one heart. It's one heart. If you can't feel one three in caffeine anymore, ephedrine and caffeine. If you can't feel it anymore, it's time to take a break and uh, let your receptors reset. Yeah, it's it's it's. But you know what, Steve? Because every, you know, in, in the sport that we love, as it's been through the years, and I, you know, I was big in the seventies, eighties, retired in eighty seven, you know, and so as, as I see things now, and, and I really got more active, and you went with me to this show this year, it's the first bodybuilding show I've been to, and um, my son in law started asking me questions. You've seen my, I, I've told you, my son in law will text about a guy and say, my friends are saying that he's natty and I'll go to you. And you're like, no way. Because it's now affecting my son in law. This one, he was in high school playing football for Fresno State. So I, and, so, and, and so when it got personal for me, I told Danny, I go, these guys, every one of them you see is on something. And if they are saying they aren't, they're lying. I remember when the Liver King came out and he goes, Tom, this guy's swearing. And I, I go, he could swear that we're, climate change is real. <laughs> I'm just teasing you guys. That's another show we do. I'm just saying, it, I mean, he's not. And then when it came out that he was lying, you know, my son uh, was started giving me more, my son lost more credibility for Tom because I just know the sport. It's a sport of excess. If it doesn't, work in small things do more we see that with training we see that with every every line they try to cross or enhance we set, we see excess it, 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 the, the the bad thing is so many of these bodies are built off the gear like they don't even give their chance their body the chance to develop anymore I, I remember guys with these youngsters would come up to me and brag to me how they were on gram after gram after gram after gram, and they're running three, four thousand grams plus this much insulin, this much HGH, and they'd brag and be like, "Oh, that's because uh, this top level bodybuilder takes it." And I would look and go, "Well, then why don't you look like them?" I, I love your <laughs> saying. I've used that several times, Steve, because I think it's creative. <laughs> well, I, I, I tell people, and and this is just my experience. I found my journal, and I'm a journaler. I journal everything, and I do electronically now and digitally. But I, I found my journal. I used to record my workouts. I used to record my, my food intake. I did this before I even stepped on a, um, a city stage in an open division, teenage divisions. And I remember uh, I found after I already won a lot of open shows. I don't, even, I don't even like to talk about the ones you win anymore because I got stripped of titles from the AAU because I like the NPC better, which it is a better organization if you want quality. And people say, when that came out, why did I switch? I go, if I wanted to win a show and be the best, I'm competing with the best. Yes. I know you the same yes. way. You did that with powerlifting and yeah. you did that with, yes. with bodybuilding. And so um, as, as I did, as I progressed, I remember in, in, an entry in a, a journal that I found after my mom passed away at the, my old house. I lived in um, when I was young growing up that journal talked about it and I found the page where 21 I did anabolics but I had already been through my 16 17 18 19 20 21 years and at that point I was winning some major state shows and I and I and they were my my managers everybody said hey Tom you gotta take some I showed somebody a picture the other day because muscular development sad but story you, you didn't get went out of print you know they, they're not oh, printing anymore and so it's such and, a disappointment and, and we'll so, come back to that one in a minute oh yes. it's a disappointment and, and so I sent a picture because guys were posting I go this was a you know a, this was a uh, a photo shoot I did for muscular development when they were printing it back in um you know I was 20 and they're like well how much did you weigh and I go I, I came into shows at 2 9 2 10 and I was about 220, 235, you know, because back then, I mean, we're still trying to go off and on the gear. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so, and they're like, well, you couldn't be that old. I go, I was. I mean, I, I go, I know how old I was. So I was big and strong before I started gear. I, I let my Go blood, figure that. Yeah. You know, and, and as, as you're there, you might want to start doing a PED. But like you said, Steve, be careful, even with caffeine, ephedrine. And, well, they come out the gate on every exotic. Like, yeah. Uh, like, you have to take all that just to win the... 
a Rudy Poo show? I, I, I was stunned. And I know we're going to talk about the Olympics. I was stunned by somebody. I don't know which. Um, uh, um, I'll throw him under the bus for you. I don't know. I I don't know which. It might have been Vox. It's Vo not Vox. There's another uh, bodybuilding um, thing. They always ask you to join. And um, and I saw an article that talked about how much. It was interesting how much the Olympians are paying for a show. A, for annual cost. And I saw the annual cost. And I do know what the payouts are. And so that means a majority of the athletes are going home. Broke. Well, more than broke, negative. I had a friend that mortgaged his house to take GH back in the day, and he wasn't taking it right because he didn't gain any weight. He just got shredded. <laughs> and I said, well, you're, 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 you're sending out, you know, your body is creating antibodies. Are you seeing somebody to give you an antibody blocker? And he goes, no. And I go, well, you just mortgage your home hope you can pay for your home again because you just got a second on it so i mean there's people out there that are willing to risk their financial or their current financial status for a dream that's not going to happen god I, I remember i i know i was on the low end and how much a show cost oh, me on i can't even imagine low Steve. end and, and not only does it cost you in the money it takes it preparation time food to, everything. the time away from normal people because they don't you don't want to be around them and they really don't want to be around you if the question, if you're out there and you're competitive, your family regrets being around you during show prep, <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't do normal things, right? I remember rolling my window up and driving away from my mom, and she calls me on the phone. And she goes, "Where are you going?" I go, "Weren't you done talking?" She goes, "No, I was catching my breath." And I was like, "Well, I'm gone now. Bye." <laughs> <laughs> I walked through the front door. My brother tells the story. I walked through the front door on the Thanksgiving or Christmas. And I left LA, came to Bakersfield, walked through the front door, put the presents down. And I go, these people are too happy. <laughs> I go, I, I walked out the back door, went home. My brother called me when I got home because there weren't cell phones in those days. <laughs> and he said, did you go home? And I go, I did. He goes, why? I go, I would have well, ruined everything. <laughs> I, I, I said, I, you know, I came and I was like, I can't, I mean, I'm not a happy person right now. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with diet. And you know, it wasn't because I wasn't eating food. I just was not eating food I wanted to eat. I was eating a ton of good food and I was taking a ton of drugs that were, you know, throwing me up and down. And I was just a, I was a basket case to be around. I remember being inside of 24 hours, being able to smell Popeye's, Jack in the Bar. Oh. Jack, I could smell all the fast food restaurants on the stair meal through the walls. It, 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 I used to go grocery shopping. I had a friend, Roy Latimer, and we would go to a grocery store and just think about the food we could eat the day after a show. That's a sickness. That's not normal, guys. I'm just telling you, it's not. I, 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 I found myself today, Steve. So we used to do a thing called red light, red light and bridge. We, we used to call things stoplights and bridges because when we would come to one, if we got under a bridge, we would flex a muscle group until we got another bridge. And it'd be like a competition. So then we would do stoplights. So today I was filling up my truck and I found myself doing calf raises. I go, what am I doing? It's a habit. So I used to always say, well, I'm gonna get ahead. I'm gonna just do calf raises until my gas tank's filled up. And, and then I got in, I go, oh, my calves are pumped. That's pretty cool. I used to do that. Why did I do that? Well, I did it because I wasn't, I, I just like, I got to, I got to maximize every. We could not waking. train, we could not train enough. Yeah. It's you, I, weird hearing I, people I, say that they, they want to be out of the gym in this amount of time. And it's like, I couldn't train enough. Oh my gosh. It's just so, so, so as you're out there and this may be a sports you're loving, I get it. I get it. You know, a lot of guys want to look good. And a lot of the guys that are Instagram are, are. Um, influencers in this area, you, most of them don't compete, right? You know, they just want to look good. And um, I, I always like this guy because I'll come and I'll say, so what am I not seeing in this picture? He goes, he's got terrible legs because he doesn't train his legs. And he got amazing delts or he's got oily delts or he's got amazing. There's things. this guy that goes, oh, oh he's. We're going, I, we're going down that rat yeah, hole. So. He, he, he just. They sit up here. His delts are out here. He was Ed. Ed sent it to me the other day. He goes, and the guy he's doing. Uh, he's showing his favorite shoulder routines. And Ed goes, he forgot to mention synthol. And I was like, well, well, I saw an older guy the other day. Yes, that's who we're talking about. Oh, in the, I, I, in the blue cutoff shirt. Yes, and I was looking at it going, the dude's what sixty, and I'm like going, he did synthol. Because, I mean, that was... The, you see the traps? They're, they're not... They're just a big lump that just touches his ear. There's no I, shape. I, I, I looked and I go, wow, there's no way, not even symmetrically. I mean, you can't even get that angle if you wanted to for how your muscle developed in that way. And I go, hey, so, and his quote was, well, hey, I still got it at 60. I go, no, you don't. You got that at 20 or 21 and it threw a needle. 
that wasn't hard work and you're stuck with it till you die you know so and he's thin now and so they're becoming more pronounced i mean yes sorry if that's you yes you know I, yeah. and, and I, i'll wrap myself out and i've done it on this show before because there was a thing called escaline i'll never forget it my you know and if you go through a diet it's funny did you ever have a problem when a body part would start to fail and you're like i'm doing everything i'm going through my pages of my notes going but nothing different it just decides to do something so escaline was a cosmetic drug a lot of guys used it back then and, and so what it did was it aggravated your muscle tissue because it's like injecting alcohol and it was stung like alcohol. I tell my ex-wife, give me a shot of Escaline in my calf and uh, get out of the room. <laughs> it took a few minutes before I could walk because all the liquid in my body went straight down there because they were traumatized. But it would fill up with water. You would be devoid of any separation of the muscle tissue. But you're just trying, I was just trying to go on a show balanced. You know, and, and so I'm not saying we didn't, I didn't do things. So don't sit out there and say, I'm preaching from a, 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 um, um, on the, a soapbox. Yes. I mean, because I'm guilty of this. But there has to be some, there's got to be a crossing point. And I do think this Olympia, so many people saw a picture of the winner. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll lack saying his name. And I sent you <clears throat> the picture that I saw the next morning. No. And, and I, and I, I, I've seen my picture get used several other times because he just got on the internet because I sent it and I circled a few things and I said, is this is what you're talking about, oil? And he said, and Steve's like, absolutely. Because the problem was the oil started to drain out. Like oil does. Well, no, that's not a drainage. That's just, if you look at his pictures, that is where he's shot it and he he probably did it himself. And most of, most of the pros are going to cosmetic doctors. Now. Yes. And they're getting it done cosmetically so they don't end up looking like the guys from South America. Uh -huh. I think he shot his d lats up himself, and those are the deposits that are left. Well, well what was crazy is the day before, the pockets weren't there. Because there are. So he's a daily, he does it day of. So, so, so it, something happened because it looks like somebody just put a half of a softball under you know what? arm no, pots. We're smarter than this. He just pulled the water out. Uh, so I, just, he just pulled the water out and that pocket's there yeah it just because it because it because I, I saw how so so as you're out there you're getting to a point where when i was and this i'm gonna get on a soapbox again so when i was competing in, and i know it's back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth so those don't get on me but you can if you want to say something say it um but if you had a tattoo you, you, got you not. marked down. Yes. That was a defect in your body. Yes. That's one of the reasons I, I got, when I started, stopped competing is when I got my tats. I got, I'm naked because, and it's not because I probably wouldn't want a tattoo because I wanted a earring, you know, and I was denied having an earring by mm -hmm. Joe Weider. So, I mean, Joe's dead, God rest his soul. But I mean, he owned me. So he's like, I don't want you to change your image. Earring's going to change your image. I go, yeah, I want to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's not your image. You're an All-American. All-Americans can't look cool. You know, and, and I get where they were going with me. I get it. I mean, I, you know, one time they printed an article that had kids and my ex-wife and I didn't have kids. And Joe Weider asked me one time, well, how, who, who knows you have, who does who knows that you don't have kids? I go, my friends. He goes, huh. They don't count. <laughs> Seven million people read muscle and fitness and flex. You have kids. <laughs> Make up names for them, Tom. Get over yourself. This is the entertainment industry. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay. But, but, but so, so. As you're out there, I didn't have a tattoo because they were they would be graded down of having a tattoo, and and implants were a no no. And it's horrible in the women's division. And now. and so implants and, and implants weren't good in the seven late seventies and eighties. They just the surgery wasn't as good. So I had some friends that had some really terrible jobs that disappeared from uh, bodybuilding because they'd have implants and then have them taken out. And then that's two years of your life of training. You know you're never getting that back. It's not happening. It's not. I got injuries all over my body because I couldn't take six months off to recover because I, I, I got to train. I mean, there's, you take six months off, see you later. They forget about you. Yeah. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs> Good luck. So, so, so if you're out, so, so oil, I mean, it's, it's, is, is it a pro, how far down does it go? Does it go down to the small? I remember. Um, no, to, to the novice divisions? I remember when it first got prevalent. Um, and uh, what was his name, the promoter, the West Coast promoter? John Lindsay? John Lindsay. Okay. 
And Good John, friend of mine. I like John that. Lindsay got on his soapbox and he preached to everybody. He yelled at all of us. Meaning you're an athlete. You're, in, you're in the you athlete get, meeting. If you get caught using that stuff in my shows, I and it was right. And he was a promoter. And it was right at the right at. I would say I, I was nineties nineties two mid two thousand to mid two thousand. So I want to say it was right to that ninety two thousand swing. And he was on there, and he was. If I catch anybody, if you're using doing a John it, Lindsay show. That's a great show. Yeah, in California, he was, and he was, shows. he was just on it, on it, on it, on it, on it, on it, on it. And I remember the guy that was getting followed around that day by Muscle and Development. And they were taking pictures of me. I don't know what happened to those pictures. I think they're on his wall somewhere. His bank bank. No, I don't they, know. they, they, you know, Steve, <laughs> they will surface. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> those pictures are somewhere. They didn't yeah, make it the magazine. I, 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 there isn't too many months that don't go by. Somebody goes, Is "That you, Tom?" I go. Yeah, I didn't. I forgot about. That. So I was feeling really good about myself this show, and the young man that came behind me—I'm not even going to throw his name on the bus. If you want to Google and look at different shows, that's up to you. And I remember he turned around and looking at him, going, "Ooh!" But then I could see all the synthol marks. I was, "Oh, they're going to—he's going to disqualify him." And he won the whole show. I got a muscular. He was—he was the one who got the MD spread, not me. Isn't that crazy? And I was like, "But you just said." Yeah. And then I did the California that year, and that was the guy who won California. His hamstring. Wouldn't stop flexing. It was in a constant flex. And he won the cow heavyweight, the super heavyweight. And there was another guy walking around with a, his bicep wouldn't stop flexing. And he won the masters. And I was like, oh. This is a new game. Oh, God. I'm, ah. This I, is a new game. So, so, so it's crazy because when you start bringing in this, even the cosmetics, because now we're saying you don't even have to work out. Is working out is a secondary now. I mean, we look at athletes like Ronnie Coleman and those who have obvious injuries from surgeries that were caused from injuries that he had. So surgeries were necessary. And Ronnie, like you said, had um, some surgeons that probably didn't perform the best on him. And he's, you know, in, in, you know, using canes to walk with nowadays and things like that. But he is eight time Mr. Olympia, you know, much better than me. I mean, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but it's, um, it's a risky sport to begin with, but now people might say, well, to get that 20 inch bicep, I don't have to lift the weights that they did. Or if I got to get the quads, I can just inject some oil or go to the right oil guy and become something that I'm not really that. I mean, you, you talk, there again, I've got a friend and he uh, won three Mr. Olympias and his name is Frank Zane. And he was the chemist, you know? And, and, and he had a slider build and I don't knock Frank for that because um, I thought he looked great. I always try to mimic Frank in, 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 in a symmetrical fashion, no matter how much muscle you would put on. And, uh, and that was his era of the mid 80s, uh, you know. Um, and so whatever, it's, it's, it's okay to have a slight build and you can do a lot with it. Well, you got these guys like, okay, let's, let's, let's factor in the Olympia guys, okay? The current champion, he needed a bigger back in order to get there. Mm. Does he wait the five years to get the bigger back? or does Because he he's training harder, risking injuries. Yes. Because weights will give you an injury. Yes. So, you know, do does he wait the five years it's going to take or does he jump the, jump the curve? Yeah. So he jumps the curve and he deals with it. It's the blowback. What's the blowback? Uh, I remember uh, Rami when he walked out and you could tell that his quads were just full of the stuff. And it was like... It didn't make sense, but now Rami's body's done you, because it won't turn anymore. Because you, you, you know, and this is what I think people don't realize: there starts to be a loss of respect, you know. And I'm not saying that you didn't need to do it, but I mean, where's that genuineness that I worked hard to develop this? There's the loss of respect is our generation. Yeah, from me back, from them forward. There's no loss of respect because they want it now. Yeah. So you've got these 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds who are shooting their shoulders up so they can have a bigger shoulder. And they don't realize that anything you do early, oh, I know. it's going to affect you later. It's, it's, it's a. So at least in these guys, like Derek was a 212 champion. So he was the 212 champion before he became the, the yeah. Mr. Olympia. So you got the 212 champion. He won already before he decided to even mess with that stuff. So he was already peak physical, and so and I hate the stuff. But at the same time, it makes you know, okay, cool. You you've gained an instant forty pounds, 
And Without gaining a pound. Yes. The classic physique, 212. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and, 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 and he's got the title now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and, and as, as we talk about this, it's at what cost? Because they also had a guy who I think went to the hospital a couple of days before. And I forgot the young man's uh, name. It was Brandon. He, uh, he, uh, they said he was, said he had an ulcer. So, so it, that's, and that's good. And we'll go with that. No. <laughs> but there is things in our industry that we realize, because I, I was telling somebody the other day, we were talking about bodybuilding and they said, what were some of your hesitations? I go, my first hesitation about the sport was when my heart went into defib because of a problem with potassium sodium. And I had to go to a doctor and they injected my heart with a muscle relaxer. And um, it uh, allowed me to not die. And he's like, you're probably going to keep doing this. And I was like, uh, well, just tell me what my blood work is and I'll fix this. And it, as I came into the second time and did it again, I started questioning my decisions. Because this, these, were, these were like six weeks out of a show that was you know working just with a a um sodium potassium i tell people all the time the day you walk on that stage and you can echo this the day you walk on that stage and you look this fantastic person you're you're walking death you're within seconds of dying you it's just it's you feel the worst it's, it's not a good it's just not good and people do it all the time i don't get it i agree um yeah, but that synthol. Okay, we could be beat up the synthol all day. I'm gonna go to a certain person, and I'm gonna call them out because they're the person's gonna be a friend of yours. Oh, well, it's okay. I mean, I, I, yeah, you don't have to call them out. And uh, they might get it and send me a nasty text. But there okay. was a certain over. guy that Still. was top. I know he was in the top six, and you could tell his body was done, and he's young. Oh, I know. He um, it, it, he he got a gift of being that high. Um, you could see the skin sagging and the hardness was gone, and I was like, oh, "That's an old man body on a very young man." It, it, the receptors it, yes. are dying; they're, they're not dying. accepting it anymore. You, you know, there's so many. Um, I I think everybody has to take responsibility for what they do, and um, as I've got. I had stage four kidney disease. I'm down to stage two. I got a heart issue. You and I always talk about that. You helped me so much with that. But I'm still dealing with it. And this is long after the the um, trophies tarnish. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, I mean, recognition will leave you. I remember when Sean was looking for some pictures. I mean, he goes, Tom, there's those pictures out there. I go, because I'm has been. <laughs> I go, I'll send you some, but there's not a lot out there. And that's why I see a lot of these youngsters and they, they, the way I, and it was my mindset and it's me. So I'm just talking about me. My mindset was, okay, cool. I'll do this much to win a local show. If I win the local show, I will step this much forward yeah. to do a national show because now. Because it's a deal with yourself. Well, because uh, th there's something involved here. If I yeah. turn pro, I might make some money. Yeah. I'm not making any money over here. When I get here, there's some money involved. Now I was blessed to get a sponsorship here, but here there's money involved. This just got me free protein. Yeah. This might get me some money. From here, I knew I'd be willing to go there. And the willing is how far you take your body. Yes, because I knew each step of the way I was going to have to increase. Yeah. So I knew that if I wanted to be Mr. Olympia, I was gonna to have to take even more. So I was like, if I have to take that much stuff just to get past the local level, I'm not going to be Mr. Olympia, and what's the point? It's it's one of those things, Steve, because people have dreams and aspirations. Mine was honestly um, to win the America, and I came one spot short, um, and I didn't want an Inspire to go on, and um, and I do remember saying it's not worth it because of my experiences with my heart. And which, you were making money. You I were you were you were sponsored. You, you were getting free clothes, free I, shoes, I, television I, I, ads. You were making money. People were sending me checks. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Steve, I was telling somebody the other day, and they go, you know, and, and I don't think the personal appearances are there anymore. But I used, my fee was twenty five hundred bucks for six minutes on stage. 
You know, I mean, they're like, well, that's a lot of money for six minutes. I go, it's not the six minutes. It's the decade it took to get here. And, if you know, if, you, if you're, you know, back then, all those posters were the only media. You're not spending all that money for Picasso because it's an art painting. It's just it because of what Picasso skills. <laughs> so, so people would always complain. I go, well, I got a manager who's going to make some money, and he's not going to let me do anything that he's not making money on. That's so, so here's his phone number calling. I mean, it just was one of those things that it kind of just led you down a rabbit hole because you had to keep making those decisions. And it wasn't like when I, you know, when I, I the last show I placed, I did well in because I came in steroid free, but not PED free. I mean, I was doing some anabolics. I was doing thiomucase. Just and, the ones that don't pop on the, on the P test. Yes. And, and so I was, I, I, so I, I, I was doing that, but I was going because the test is what was going to keep people out of the universe. And I wanted to go on. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, okay, the gear is not going to get me that first place because there again, some of the pictures I get sent now is me stuck between Tom Twilliger, Sean Ray, Vince Taylor. <laughs> I, we're all the T's. <laughs> and I was like. But it's not a bad place to be stuck between because every one of them were top five Olympians well, at one well, point. Well, I know, but I'm just saying. So when people send me pictures, I go, oh, yeah, that was a lineup. And uh, I don't look the best one there because they, they, they went on. So, so, so you have to be willing to take a chance. And yeah. I'm not sure people are willing or want to take that now, chance. Now, when you watch the Olympia, we're, stop being critical. Let's go back to our love. What did you think? We'll, we'll stay in the top three. We'll, we'll stay in the top three. What did you think of the top three? Of this one last yes, one. this last one. Um, I thought that the guys that I liked didn't even make the top three. Mm -hmm. And which ones were those? Well, yeah, it's funny because I don't remember names. I remember physiques. Okay. But I do know as Lansford won, I looked at it, this isn't a pleasing physique for me. And then as I looked down at Hattie, I, if I had to pick between the top three, I'd have picked Hattie. I, I I liked him. I like the work that he puts in. And I do know that he comes from an area where they are the mm. new. We'll come new, to we'll come back to that one. Yeah, that is the new, new place. And maybe there's a part two of this show on that. Mm, we'll come back but to that one. That is the new. Um, oh, I thought you were going to talk about his representation of the Olympia. No, no, I'm saying that he's coming from an area that they have more gear than anywhere. And a lot of Americans go there now to do their gear. Oh man, it's not to do their gear. We'll come, mm. What is it then? Tell me. Okay, imagine you're in your heyday. Uh -huh. Okay, this is your heyday, you're, you're training hard, you know how expensive the sport is. Uh -huh. Some guy calls you up, tells you to come live in his palace for six months. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna pay every bill you have, so I'm gonna pay all your home bills, I'm gonna. Make, oh, I get it. I'm gonna make sure your wife has money. I got you. I'm gonna make sure everything's fed. I there. want you to be in my house. You're just gonna be here working out here. I have a doctor with you at 24/7. Uh -huh. There's a chef with you 24. That's why these guys are coming back 40, 50 pounds heavier. Could you imagine not having to do oh, no. anything for six months? No. I, 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 there again, there, it's it's the team. You, you 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 gotta you, soon as you get done training you've got a doctor he does your blood work every day he checks your hormone level <laughs> well I, there again I got a I got a, a chiropractic adjustment and massage every day yes and it was a bother to me Steve <laughs> I go I can't go with you guys because I got to go get a massage and a <laughs> nowadays I would <laughs> I wish I had that I'd be a, so I'd, when that, when they walked through I, I'm with you when they walked out my eyes went to Derek Derek had the better X frame. Mm -hmm. But the longer they posed, the more I was team Hottie. Uh. The longer they like Hottie came on and I watched Derek fade. I said, this man didn't do his homework. It's 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 one of those things where if you're seeing your body be um internally expanded, it's going to leave. Mm -hmm. And his left. I had it, I moved him from first to third. I not the biggest Samson fan. Uh -huh. I am not a big Samson fan. I think he's got a lot of holes. I know he's the new it, and like, like you know, he at least reminds me of a '90s bodybuilder. Steve, when you say he's a new it, isn't it a given nowadays? Because you, we can watch football. I'm a um, Packer fan, and so ba Jordan loves the Bakersfield product. So I really want to see him succeed, and so I'm willing if they give him another year because I know he's young and he'll be back. Mm -hmm. But is that the status of bodybuilding anymore? Is it is it just because they were there this year and looked great? Because Big Ramsey looked great when everybody said um, he hit it nails on, mm -hmm. and and he's not been back to repeat that. 
His, his body fell apart. Yeah, huh? but I'm just saying he's not back. So you can't take an ex. You know, and, and, and I think we have to say this is sometimes an experiment, isn't it, Steve? I mean, for me, going from one show to the next, I could have the same notes, and I'm looking at myself going, "That's not the same body." Yes. You know, and so as as you have other sports that you know, if they're you know having a time or a a, a, a talent that when you're presenting a physique that's based on you know you know a depletion process a expanding process using drugs to mix in there is that y you can't bring maybe the same is there again when lee haney was in and lee haney was winning you know you just saw lean lee bring back the same package year after year i mean he we're not talking about weight gain we're just talking about bringing the same package and waiting for somebody to bring a better package. He was he was so far out in front of everybody yeah. back then, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, those top three. I mean, uh, you know, Lee Labrada would switch in with Richie, and you know, you would you would, but but the the contest was for second and third. Yes, it was. <laughs> then you brought in Sean Ray, and you brought in Flex, and you brought in uh, Vince, and you brought in Chris Kamir. Oh, I miss those beautiful bodies. So, so 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 then, but it was always Lee because, like you said, he was years ahead, and his physique really never changed. It just was the same package year after year. So there was something about that. You knew where Lee was coming. You knew what his last, we're gonna have this beautiful sweep. You knew he was having a hard time with his biceps. You just knew that, but there was no glaring problem that didn't get fixed next year by 40 pounds. All the guys that were big enough to stand with him, I don't know, this is my personal opinion as a child looking at those things. They just didn't seem to. One of my one of my best friends, Roy Latimer, had a physique similar to Lee's, but Roy's problem is he can never bring the physique in on the day of the show. That's where you I was look, going. You look at him three days before, nails on. No one's beating him. I got to walk into a, a, a athletes meeting uh, for a contest that Roy and I were at for Gold's Gym. As, you know, it was, they were my sponsor. Roy never made my life easy with those guys. But if you're Roy, you listen, you know the reason. You know, because <laughs> they didn't like him. <laughs> and that was easy to do for Roy back in the day. And people used to, Joe Weider used to tell me, Tom, Roy's not good for your career. I go, okay, but he's my friend. He's good for my life. And, and I didn't make friends based on my career. And so as Roy was there, man, he came in. We worked out. We walked into the athletes meeting by mistake. And Lee was there. And everybody's like, Roy, Lee, take your shirt off by Roy. And Lee acted like he didn't pay attention to him. And finally, Lee's like, I'm not taking him off my shirt. Roy just worked out and looks great. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You know? Smart. <laughs> because Roy had a big... Somebody would have had a camera. Roy had a big, beautiful physique. But if there was no stress to bring it, bring I, it on I stage... Because you had, what, Mike, Berto Fox. Oh, you had, yeah, you, well, you had, you, you had Bobby Paris. Um, you had Rory. You had Mike Christian. You had... Um, Lee Gaspari, you had Lee um, Labrada. You, no, I just mean the guys that were big enough to stand next oh, to him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the upper, well, that would be Bobby Paris. That'd be Roy Lidlmeyer. You had a guy named John Brown. You had um, uh, any more heavyweights there that would come in? Probably not. Yeah, there was Christian. Um, Paris. And and when they, when, they, when those crowds went out, you had Troy Zuccolato. Troy was you know, there. But Troy didn't have that physique like Lee or Rory. Yeah, and that's what that's what made um, Vic. Oh yeah, look beautiful of because because he they, everybody thought he would be the one because he he was big enough and oh, prettier man. than, but he never put on stage. So yeah. let's go back to the modern days. So cause they're gonna say we're being old dogs reminiscing about when I, I keep looking was for great. our time here, and I'm like, where are we at? Oh, just look for a clock. I, I know about what time we started. <laughs> oh. So um, we'll. I guess that Samson's body, I, I get why it's, why people like it. He's he's he is not oiled up, at least yeah. as far as I could tell. When he turns around, the hamstrings, the the quads, the calves, everything it re has that flex wheeler, Vince Taylor look. It's not it's not a balloon. Yeah. I think the, the mo a lot of the guys you can look and just be like, it's uh, the, 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 you 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 your weight has changed twenty pounds, but the muscle isn't there that's produced that 20 pounds. It's like a balloon that you blew up and now you're presenting. Oh, let's do a what if. Okay, what if. Um, do you think Nick would have won if he hadn't been there, if he hadn't have tore his hamstring? Uh, I see that was another young man. And of course we can say that the weights that they are having to lift 
to maintain that muscle, especially in the hammy area, in the <laughs> that quad area, the poundage that they're. I saw that video he did when he tore it. Yeah, so, I thought he was doing too much. Yeah, so so they're putting it on there, and I think it would have been a different game. I, I really I, did. I think this was his show to lose. Uh, I, I I think that would have been a different thing. I still like Hunter Labrada, and um, I know with his dad and his physique, but I don't there again know if that's been ex it's brought to the point of can't go back. You know, I don't know. I mean, hey, great run, but you know, inherit your dad's nutrition company <laughs> i don't know they got a great life and i likely i mean you know he beat my friend johnny arnita ah, and and, yeah. and johnny had a pleasant physique back then if you go back into the the light the middleweight class i have uh, one last question uh, for you is open bodybuilding dead i think it is because i don't get and you and i went to a show where they had an amateur show and an open pro show and i was confused i you know i'm looking at Okay, where are we? What are we trying to do? And I think I think they started losing some things because the next person, and I think your analysis of this about sebum moving into the open, I liked your comment. Like, is his liver and digestive system good enough to allow him to eat the food that will require that? All right. People yeah. think is people think it's the drugs. Yeah, it's he's already on this the, the, it, the gear. It's the same. Yeah. It's not different. Yeah. So you've got to do something to send you up to that class. Yes. So so I do think, I think there's a confusion between all the divisions because people are like, oh, I saw this and I have to ask, well, did they have beach trunks on? Oh, that was the, the, the what do they call that now? The, the physique. The physique. And if they have black trunks on, that's called a classic. And yes. people look at me and go, why? I go, I don't know. It's not my era. I go, we just had one. We're all lumped in, and, I think, and you flex, and somebody goes, "Oh, you're the winner." And I think a lot of the the open is dead because the generation that should be pushing them is happy getting it now. Yeah. So it's kind of hard. Like, I don't see all the. Do, do Do you have any more Dexter Jacksons around? If they're coming, they're coming from the Midwest. If they are, because the West Coast is locked in. West Coast and, and Florida areas, they're locked in in the classics. Yeah. Because and there's nothing I, I like classic physique, so it's not a knock against it. Because because it is the '80s classic physique. I I think the I don't like the weight limit on it though. It needs to be a little bit heavier. Yeah. Um, Do they have a super heavy in that one? The the cap out I think is two forty five. It might be up to two fifty. That, that, that that would have been a super heavy in my day. Yeah, but we I, didn't the have only it, one that can actually reach that is Chris. Is Bumstead? Yeah. <laughs> He's the only one talking enough to reach it. Um, but. The younger generation, the now generation, classic allows them comp to be able to compete now. You and I both know to be open. There's some time that you have to push There's away maturity. and you have to grow the muscle. You have to get there. Most open guys are in their late 20s, 30s, and 40s. Like, especially. Are the, are the 40s winning, though? They're still winning. Good. Well, I didn't and, know that. Because and, and uh, they have Masters now. Didn't they do a Masters Olympia? Yeah, I forget who won that one. The publicity for the Olympic, and I think that's another reason it's dying, is publicity for a for a. It, I, I went on a long rant on another podcast on how horrible their publication is run. You can't watch a show without having to pay money um, for the Olympic. Next year's gonna be free. No, Arnold is free. Oh, Arnold's free. Arnold's free. Arnold's making Thank it free. Thank you, Arnold. He's smart. Because, I, I mean, I went on this long rant. Like, if I wanted to look at 2012's Mr. Olympia, I can't. I can't go to YouTube and watch it. I have to go and buy a DVD. Who watches a DVD anymore? <laughs> it's not even available on streaming service. I can't go to Amazon, type it in, and be like, oh, cool, I'll buy that for nine bucks. It is literally, I've got to buy a DVD. <laughs> it is the dumbest thing in the world. I can't see the Can You, you can't go anywhere and find any clips of the olympia unless you go to like some so-and-so's page like one of the guys i like to watch like, is nick strength and power so i have to go watch nick strength and power to see the olympia there's no more print i know you, i used to be able to sit at the albertson's and just look at the print and go okay cool that's how i found out think about it when you read the nationals you got to see the nationals usa yeah. so you got to see who the top 10 were and you could go oh that guy's next yeah i don't know who's next yeah. i was watching uh, i saw something on uh the uh on instagram and it was a kid and I was like, hey, who's that kid on the outside? I said, I don't follow bodybuilding like I used to. And I, oh, Steve, it's da 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 And I was like, I like his physique. They should have moved him in. Yeah, I like that. I but like that analysis. There's just, the publicity is killing it because there isn't any anymore. 
where it's a dead it's a dead art that was already a, a cult art now mm -hmm. it's just dead and, and, and it's hard to d beat the drums to drum that up and when every see. when they're when when the powers that be are holding it well it's, it's so, so crazy tight. i got to ride the fitness revolution in how come they don't have a, how come they don't have an app hey if there's anybody out there that happens to work for the in, ifbb npc make an app like you could make an app and they're pro I'd probably I know I'd spend ten bucks a month. Yeah. I spend that much to watch watch Paramount Plus. Yeah. I'd give you ten dollars a month to be able to go and watch every bodybuilding show in the world because yeah. I like bodybuilding. Well, it, well, it, that's when football season comes around. We watch football now. Yes. You've got the you know summertime league, which isn't as good, but I like the fact that they inter interview a player right after he made a great catch. Yeah. So what you think about when you made that catch is. <sighs> I gotta go back in. Yes. You know, I like that. I was like, well, what are, I, I was like, what are they gonna do different on these um, summertime football shows? But they've added it. I mean, and it is watchable, but the stands aren't there because people are, are going to watch it in public. Yes, I mean, 10 bucks, make an app. I'd watch it. I mean, how great would that be? Hey, well, there again, we're not picking on a sport we love. We are talking about a sport. $10 that, for an app, make it. That we love, that we feel is somewhat circling the dream. Do you know how many people would, you have to figure bodybuilding, uh, how many publication magazines did Weeder sell, about five, six million? Seven million. Seven million. Well, no, that was in the, when I retired. We're just gonna say, we're just gonna say right there. Yeah, yeah, seven so million. seven million, if half of seven million people, 2.5, I'm gonna help you guys with the math. 295 is what it cost. And I told you, Richie sent me a copy of a, a magazine that he was on the cover I was supposed to get, and I was on the inside, and I but I had a cover um, uh, um, title line. And he sent it to me, and it was selling for twenty nine dollars. But the price that it sold for new in eighty four was two ninety five. So if so somebody's, <laughs> you, you better look around, find you some on eBay and sign them. <laughs> I told Richie, I go send me some. I was like, I, so if I you got one. My wife wanted to sell if it. If you take three point five million people by ten dollars, that is thirty five million dollars. Yes, that you could make every single month. Dear IFBB, by having a ten dollar app that'll let you allow. So when when the Olympia comes, I don't have to give you ninety dollars. Yeah. It's part of my ten dollar app yeah. that I'm giving you. It's a subscription. Every, every have a paywall, right? We can do that. So, so Steve was um, Jim Mannion at the I, um, Olympia. I don't know. I, I know he's in trouble. I mean, the, the, you know, every, you know, everybody gets in trouble nowadays. Um, and Jim's in trouble with. I, 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 there's some allegations out there. I watched. Uh, I watched. Uh, I found. A, I found a hot stream. I'm not even gonna lie. But but bodybuilding will protect its own. It, there is. It's always been known to do that, and they do. They do. They like do. Like politics. They do. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like politics. <laughs> Real quick. Okay, let's finish up with the young man that I I like. Have you seen him yet, Neckzilla? Yes. Well, he catches my eye because he's done something with physique that is unique. He is he is taking the muscle bellies to a new level. He's 26, 27, 28. He's right well, in there. He's well, a baby. Oh, wow. Well, th there again, I, I like the nice round. I like that, and I liked it stretched out. He seems to have a little bit of a waist, too. He, he suffers from Phil Heath, Phil Heath-itis. Um, he's narrow through the shoulders uh, and the back. He has so that, but that does accentuate the traps. Yeah. So he, uh, those things, <laughs> <laughs> they touch his ears literally. <laughs> yes. So I think he suffers from a little Phil, Phil Heathism. Like when Phil Heath came out, you could tell he was narrow, uh -huh. and he just needs to fill out. I think once he fills out, the like a, he, the future's his. If, if, if and there again, like you said, if it takes it slow, a good friend of mine, and we got to get him on the show, Vic. <laughs> Rich, Vic Richards, um, uh, he reminds me of him. I yes. mean, my mind went exactly to Vic. And I've told all the young guys, I don't make any question about when I got out of the sport. I saw the future, Sean Ray, Vic Richards, I thought, but Vic you know, chose not to super stand on the stage. Could you imagine if social media was around when Vic was oh, there? Oh, man. Because he was, he was the people's champion before there was a people's championship. He was a people's champion after Roy Lattimore. Roy still, people will, Roy will still, you put a picture of Roy out there, he will still generate some older people's, they'll go back to the 82 America. Oh, he got robbed then. How much money did Mendenhall make? Uh, I, think, I think Matt made a lot 
when he was with Rachel. Because he was on the he was the GNC poster boy for umpteen million years. Was that a flat payout or did he get? No, no. Well, you see, and this is a big thing. You don't get paid from Joe either because I had a conversation with Joe about that one time. I go, Joe, if you, if you gave me a nickel for every time you make a dollar on me, I'd be a rich man. You know, and we, we, I, we'd do, I, I just would kid you not, Steve. I would have a photo shoot done and they would do it exclusively for arms and all of a sudden there'd be a poster in Egypt with me on it. I had friends that say, hey, kind of cool pister when you do that. I go, I never did that. I did it for an arm article in Muscle and Fitness. It ended up as a poster, which back then you didn't have, you know, media. So they had to get back from Egypt and go, hey, I was over there. They're selling a poster in the um, stores. And, and, and same thing in Mexico. I mean, because the, the, the bodybuilding magazine must, Hercules Moderno, and Joe Weider used to own 51% of every magazine out there. Hercules Moderno, I, used to, I was on the cover, and the cover was front, inside front, back, or inside back. Every month for four or five years. And it, but it was also a porno, pornographic magazine. You know? <laughs> so, so if you wanted to buy bodybuilding, you'd open up and go, whoa! Didn't know that was coming in the mail. <laughs> my mom was mad at me I didn't know you were in a photographic magazine I go well, I guess I I guess I am because I don't own the pictures they, they put me in a photographic <sighs> magazine uh, that, my my past life industry <laughs> Her, Hercules Moderno check it out I don't know about it nowadays but it used to have quite the inside centerfold and it wasn't bodybuilding <sighs> yeah so hey we're glad you tuned in I love doing the show with my friend Steve sitting in for blank Bernard, who was ill tonight. Get better, brother. Yeah. Have a great day. God bless.